Okay, this is the first video for extension to mathematical induction. The first type of induction questions that we're going to look at are recurrence relationships. Now, a recurrence relationship is an equation that defines a sequence as a function of one or more of its preceding terms. We'll start with an example here. If u sub 1 is 2 and u sub 2 is 22 and u sub n is 6u sub n minus 1 minus 5u sub n minus 2, for n greater than or equal to 3, show that u sub n equals 5 to the power of n minus 3 for n greater than or equal to 1. So the first sequence that we've got here, um, our sequence is defined by this relationship and it's given to us. So we don't need to prove this first sequence. We do, however, need to prove this second sequence that u sub n is 5 to the power of n minus 3 for n greater than or equal to 1. So in step one, we're going to need to prove true not only for n equals 1 but also for n equals 2 because this new sequence here does not come into play until n um, equals 3 or n, n is greater than or equal to 3. So first we're going to prove true for um, n equals 1 and n equals 2. So u1 is 5 to the power of 1 minus 3 which equals 2 which we know that u1 equals 2, okay, which is as required. u2 is 5 to the power of 2 minus 3, which is 25 minus 3, which is 22, again, as required. Now for step 2, we need to prove true not only for n equals k, but also for n equals k minus 1, that's because we needed to prove true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. So, sorry, assume. Sorry, I meant to say assume. So we need to assume true, sorry, for n equals k minus 1 and n equals k. Okay, that was step 1. This is step 2. So we are assuming that, that is, so here, we're assuming that u sub k equals 5 to the k minus 3 and we're also assuming that u sub k minus 1 equals 5. So we're um, assuming for n equals k, okay, replacing the n with a k, and n is k minus 1. So u sub k minus 1 equals 5 to the power of k minus 1 minus 3. That's what we're assuming. And step 3, we need to prove true for n equals k plus 1. That is, we need to prove that u to the k plus 1 equals 5 to the power of k plus 1, in here, minus 3. k plus 1 is equal to, so here is our, our sequence defined by this relationship. So this is um, un, so u to the k plus 1 would be 6u to the k plus 1 minus 1, minus 5u to the k plus 1 minus 2. So I'll just write that down here. So u to the k plus 1 would be 6u to the k plus 1 minus 1 minus 5u to the k plus 1 minus 2, which is 6u to the k, sub k, sorry, minus 5u sub k minus 1. Now, we have assumed that u sub k is 5 to the power of k minus 3. So we've got 6 times 5 to the k minus 3 minus 5, doing a substitution for u sub k minus 1, is 5 to the power of k minus 1 minus 3. So this is using our assumptions, our two assumptions. And simplifying, ending we've got 6 times 5 to the power of k minus 18 minus 5 times 5 to the k minus 1 plus 15, which is 6 times 5 to the power of k. Now this, um, we've got minus 18 plus 15, I'm just going to leave that for a sec, we've got a minus 3 over here at the end. And here, bases are the same, adding the indices, this is 5 to the power of 1, we will end up with minus... Um, minus 5 to the k minus 1 plus 1, which is minus 5 to the power of k. Then we've got the minus 3 there. So here we've got a common factor of 6 to the power of k times 6 minus 1, 
okay, if we take out 5 to the power of k as a common factor, take away 3, which is 5 to the power of k times 5 minus 3, which is 5 to the power of, remember this is 5 to the power of 1, so it's 5 to the power of k plus 1 minus 3, which equals, um, which is as required. Therefore, um, this is proven now by mathematical induction for n greater than or equal to 1. Second example, we have a sequence is defined such that u sub n plus 2 equals 4u sub n plus 1 minus u sub n and u1 is 2 and u2 is 4. Prove by induction that u sub n is 2 plus root 3 to the power of n minus 1 plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of n minus 1. Um, this will be for n um, greater than or equal to 1. Okay, let's start. So, prove true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. That's step 1. So, we've got u um, sub 1 is 2 plus root 3 to the 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 2 plus root 3 to the power of 0, which is 1, plus this is also to the power of 0, which is 1, which equals 2 as required. And we'll look at um, n is 2. We've got u sub 2 is 2 plus root 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of 2 minus 1, which will just be 2 plus root 3 to the power of 1, which is 2 plus root 3 plus 2 minus root 3, which equals 4. And we know that u2 is 4, again, as required. Step 2. We're going to assume true for n equals k minus 1 and n equals k um, as the sequence is defined um, here for, we've got u1 and u2, so we need to do n, n is k minus 1 and n is k, okay? So, therefore we are assuming, that is, we're assuming that 2 plus root 3, um, I'll do to the k first, to the power of k minus 1. Sorry, assume that u to the k, sub k is 2 plus root 3 to the power of k minus 1 plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of k minus 1. And that u to the k minus 1 is 2 plus root 3. This would be k minus 1 minus 1, so we've got k minus 2 plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of k minus 2. Step 3, we need to prove true for n equals k plus 1. That is, we are going to prove that u to the k plus 1 equals 2 plus root 3. Now if we've got um, k plus 1, we've got k plus 1 minus 1, which is to the power of k plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of k. Okay, let's start. So u sub k plus 1 is equal to, just coming back up here. Yeah, here's our um, definition of our sequence. So, so this is u sub n plus 2. So u sub k plus 1 will be Sorry, just looking up here. So if we want u sub k plus 1, that will be 4un minus u n minus 1. But we'll be doing it with k. So u sub k plus 1, sorry, will be u sub k plus 1 equals 4u sub k minus 4 minus u k minus 1. So just writing that out, we've got 4u k minus u k minus 1. Now, using our assumptions, we know that um, u sub k is here. So that is 4 times 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 1 plus 2 minus root 3 to the k minus 1 um, minus u sub k minus 1 
is 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2 plus 2 minus root 3 to the k minus 2. Okay. Expanding, we've got 4 times 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 1 plus 4 times 2 minus root 3 to the k minus 1 minus 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2 minus 2 minus root 3 to the k minus 2. Now, so if I take the 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2 as a lowest um, common factor of these two terms, I've got 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2 and here I've got 4 2 plus root 3 to the power of 1 because 2 plus root 3 to the power of k minus 2 times 2 plus root 3 to the 1 would be k minus 2 plus 1 gives me the k minus 1 and this is um, an identical term but just negative so I've put minus 1 there and doing the same here We've got plus 2 minus root 3 again to the k minus 2. Bracket, again 4, 2 minus root 3 to the power of 1, minus 1 again. Okay, now simplifying, we've got 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2. And here I've got 8 plus 4 root 3 minus 1 which is 7 plus 4 root 3. And here I've got plus 2 minus root 3 to the k minus 2. And here I've got 8 minus 4 root 3 minus 1, which is 7 minus 4 root 3. Now, now, let's see what we're trying to get. We're trying to prove that it's 2 plus root 3 to the k. Now, we've got 2 um, plus 2 minus root 3 to the k. We've got 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2. So let's just see if this is 2 plus root 3 squared. Okay, so 2 plus root 3 to the k minus 2. 2 plus root 3 squared. Let's just have a look. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 times 2 times root 3 is 4 root 3 plus root 3 squared is 3. So we do get, um, if we expand 2 plus root 3 squared, we get 7 plus 4 root 3. So that is correct. Plus 2 minus root 3 to the k minus 2. This will also be 2 minus root 3 squared. So you 7 minus 4 root 3. Let's just check. That's 4 minus 4 root 3 plus root 3 squared which is 4 plus 3 is 7 minus 4 root 3. Yes, that's correct. And therefore, we've got bases of the same at the indices, 2 plus root 3 to the power of um, k minus 2 plus 2 is k plus 2 minus root 3 to the power of k minus 2 plus 2 is also k, which equals right-hand side as required. Therefore, um, this is proven by mathematical induction for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay. One more example in the HSC 2003 question 6b. This particular question, there is a mixture of um, a combination of recurrence relation, factorial notation and inequalities in this one question. Okay, the question is a sequence S sub n is defined by um, S sub 1 is 1, S sub 2 is 2 and for n greater than 2, S sub n is S sub n minus 1 plus n minus 1 times S sub n minus 2. So that's a small minus 2. Um, first part of the question is to find S3 and S4. So S3 is equal to, so just using this, S3 S3 will be S3 minus 1, which is S sub 2, plus 3 minus 1 is 2, times um, S3 minus 2 is 1. So 2 plus 2 times S1, S1 is 1, so it's 2 plus 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 2, which is 4. Okay, that's what S3 is. And S4, or S sub 4, 
will be s sub 4 minus 1 is 3 plus 4 minus 1 is 3 times um, s sub 4 minus 2 is 2. So it's S3, which is 4 plus 3 times S2 is 2. So it's 4 plus 6, which is 10. So that's what um, S sub 4 is. Now for part 2, we have to prove that the square root of x plus x is greater than or equal to the square root of x times x plus 1. Okay, let's start with um, the square root of x plus x. We're going to square that first. So the square root of x plus x is equal to x plus 2x root x plus x squared. Now that is greater than or equal to, remember we're trying to get this, that is greater than or equal to x squared plus x. Since we know that x is greater than or equal to zero. So note that equality only occurs, so equality occurs um, if um, x equals 0 there. So, if, so therefore we know that the square root of x plus x all squared is greater than or equal to, sorry, yes, we know that the square root of x plus x all squared is greater than or equal to x squared plus x. Okay, now what we can do is take positive square roots of both sides. So if we take positive square root of both sides, we will get that the square root of, sorry, um, we will get that the square root of x plus x is greater than or equal to the square root of x squared plus x, which is equal to the square root of x bracket x plus 1 as required. So therefore root x plus x is greater than or equal to square root of x bracket x plus 1. We need to note that the square root function is monotonic increasing. So just note that the square root function is monotonic increasing. So we're taking positive square roots. As the square root function is monotonic increasing, therefore this expression now will hold. Part three, we have to prove by induction, sorry, um, that S sub n is greater than or equal to n, square root of n factorial for n greater than or equal to one. So for integers, sorry, I've just run out of room there. For integers, n greater than or equal to one. So we're gonna start by letting P sub n denote the proposition that S sub n is greater than n factorial. Now let's look at um, P1, so P1. So S1, S1 we know is one. So S1 is one. And the square root of 1 factorial is also, um, that is obviously greater than or equal to the square root of 1 factorial, which happens to be 1. Okay, let's look at P2. Now S2 we know is 2, and that is greater than or equal to the square root of 2 factorial because the square root of 2 factorial is the square root of 2 which is approximately equal to 1.4. Okay? So we've proven true, so therefore true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. Now we need to assume that it is true for n equals k minus 1 and n equals k. Remember that step 2, that was step 1. So that is, we are assuming that s sub k minus 1 is greater than or equal to the square root of k minus 1 factorial and that s sub k is greater than the square root of k factorial. Assuming that, so now step 3, we need to prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1. That is, we want to prove that s sub k plus 1 is greater than the square root of k plus 1 factorial. Okay, now let's start with s sub k plus 1. Now, we know that, just looking at the very um, top of the question, very beginning, part A, s sub k 
plus 1 will be s sub k plus 1 minus 1, which is s sub k plus um, k times s sub k minus 1. Okay, using this definition. Actually, I'll just write the definition down here again. So we know that S sub n is S sub n minus 1 plus n minus 1 S sub n minus 2. That's our sequence. That's how it's defined. So remembering that. So therefore, S sub k plus 1 will be S sub k plus 1 minus 1, which is S sub k plus k times S sub k plus 1 minus 2 is k minus 1. Now, that's what s sub k plus 1 is. Now, using our assumptions, we know that s sub k is greater than k factorial, and we know that s sub k minus 1 is greater than k minus 1 factorial. So therefore, this is greater than k factorial plus k times the square root of k minus 1 factorial. Now, this is equal to, so I want to take out k minus 1 factorial as a common factor between these two. k factorial is k times k minus 1 factorial, then plus k times the square root of k minus 1 factorial. So here we've got a common factor of the square root of k minus 1 factorial times the square root of k plus k. Now, looking at our part 2 result, we know that from part two, so from part two, we know that, I'll just write it here so I don't have to go back up there. We know that the square root of x plus x is greater than or equal to the square root of x bracket x plus one. That was proven in part two. Okay, so therefore, that was the assumption. So we're going to use the assumption now. So therefore, this is greater than or equal to, I'm going to replace this bit with greater than or equal to square root of k bracket k plus 1. Um, square root of k minus 1 factorial times the square root of k bracket k plus 1. And putting these all under the 1 square root sign, this is equal to k, square root of k times, sorry, I should put the k plus 1 first. So this is equal to the square root of k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 factorial, which we know is the square root of k plus 1 factorial. So therefore, we've just proven that sk plus 1 is greater than the square root of k plus 1 factorial as required. So therefore, um, proven mathematical induction. I think we did that for n greater than or equal. Okay, that's the end of the examples on recurrence relations.